So, Peter Pan and Wendy star Yara Shahidi made some statements to the press that was a staggering display of ignorance, and yet is pretty much in line with how stupid studios are today. So after the trailer came out, this was very apparent it was going to be another one of Disney's woke message, beat you over the head, race swap, gender swap, extravaganzas even going so far as to make the Lost Boys not all boys. As if that wasn't bad enough, when they send out the stars to do the press tours, they get to spout forth more ignorance and more stupidity. We have two gems from Tinkerbell herself. Here's the first one. They wanted to bring some new fun to this classic, but also give us the fairy tale we deserve. It's evident they're not just popping black and brown folks in the cast for the sake of updating the story. Instead, it's about creating a story that so many more people can see themselves in after we've been left out for so long. Okay, first and foremost, you don't deserve anything because no one deserves anything. I don't deserve anything. Self-entitled much? Narcissist much? You gotta be kidding me. Also, you actually said something correct, although you didn't think you did. You stated that it wasn't about popping black and brown characters in for the sake of the story. It's not. It's to push an agenda and a message. There's absolutely no other reason to do it. The story hasn't changed. It's pretty well established. Because honestly, here's the big kicker. If Disney were to actually write an original story, black and brown characters, no one would say a word because those are the characters. Pretty simple. This, this is pretty well established. This is race and gender swapping, not for the story, but to push a message and absolutely nothing else. And that's what people are sick of. Not deterred by this, she follows up with this second gem. I think oftentimes people think of diversity and inclusion as threatening or jeopardizing the quality of the story instead of seeing how beautifully they can be interwoven together to create something that impacts even more people, that lets even more people into stories that we love. The amount of people who are like, oh my goodness, I get to see a fairy that looks like me, I think validates the fact that we all deserve a large fantasy life. So in some ways, she's sort of correct. Gender swapping, race swapping characters doesn't necessarily impact the story, the problem being is, up till now, every single time it's been done, it has been to impact the story. Because it isn't enough to merely gender or race swap characters. They gotta go and change story aspect to really make things worse, to drive their message and drive the point home. You even said in a previous interview that there was a scene where, in the original, Tinkerbell looked in the mirror and commented on her hips. So oh, we're gonna take that out. You see? That's messing with the story. Not for any race or gender swap, but just because it's part of an overarching effort to destroy anything good and entertaining. Now, as for your argument about how it is more impactful to more people, I want to draw your attention, and I want to draw Disney Studios' attention and the world's attention to the 2020 U.S. Census for population by race. And there it is in black and white. I know people don't like to admit it, but the country remains 59.47% white. That is almost two-thirds. As for your alleged unrepresented groups, the Hispanic, or as you call them, brown people, are 18.87%, and black, which you call black, are 12.61%. And then Asian, which you make sure you never ever mention, is 5.9%. So what do those numbers mean and why are they important? They're important for two different reasons. The first being, you're not appealing to a larger audience. Black and brown combined doesn't match up with white. So your argument that you're appealing to a broader base or more people is statistically and mathematically wrong and insane. Now, you're going to follow that up by saying, no, no, no. It's because they have been so unrepresentative that they didn't have any interest in it till now, and so now we're going to include both. Well, here's where you're dead wrong. And this is the thing that I can't understand how studios don't understand this, and I don't even understand how the people involved don't understand this. A very basic education should have taken care of this very simple concept. The original Little Mermaid, as an example, 
I don't have the exact year, of course, because censuses are done every 10 years, but taking a look at the census for 19, or excuse me, 2000, close to when it came out, the whites were 75%, not even the 59% that it is now. It was more, it was greater. And yet, the film was a smash success. Now, you're not going to be able to sit here and tell me. Logic will not allow the idea that no black or brown people ever went to see Little Mermaid or ever bought it on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, or streamed it. That's insanity. It is a classic because white and black and brown and yellow, if you want to be racist, it appealed to everybody. They weren't caring about race. The enjoyment of it was not that she was a white girl with red hair. It was the story. It was the music. It was the emotion. It was the characters. That is what everyone who watched it keyed in on. Whether they were black or brown or white or orange or purple or green, you know, it didn't matter. They weren't saying, oh, because she's not black, I can't possibly relate. No. And conversely, they weren't going, mm, she's white, I can totally relate. That's lunacy. That's idiocy. That is a failure of the U.S. education system that there is anyone who could think that. The bottom line, it's very simple. It's what the studios have lost. Strong stories with great characters have universal appeal. It's that simple. And also, I'm not going to say my opinion because it is fact. Care to differ? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. Obey your king. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification icon.